All right, in this video, we're gonna continue our work with simplifying rational expressions. This is the second part of a three-part video series I'm doing on simplifying rational expressions. In this video, we're just gonna continue applying different mathematical strategies to help us simplifying uh, rational expressions. So just a quick warm up. I just wanna go over this with you. We're dividing fractions here and I wanna simplify. So if I have a negative on top uh, in my numerator as well as my denominator, I can simply cancel those out Really all this boils down to now is a division of fractions problem. You might remember that instead of dividing, we can turn this into a multiplication sign. We can flip our fraction and turn it into a multiplication of fractions problem. And thinking back to fractions, when you're multiplying, you'll recall that you multiply straight across on the top and the bottom. So negative 30 over 48. It's always a good idea to simplify, reduce the lowest terms, and divide the top by six and the bottom by six. We end up with negative five over eight. Okay, so let's jump into multiplying rational expressions. So the problem says simplify this expression stating any restrictions on any variables. Remember, restrictions are values that are not possible for an expression. Typically that involves when you're dividing by zero. Remember, you can't divide by zero. Just a good idea to state any, any values which will make your expression invalid. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remember that when I'm multiplying rational expressions, it's just like multiplying fractions. I can just multiply straight across. We're going to multiply 3 and 8 to get 24, and then a to the power of 3 times b to the power of 4 just kind of stays how it is, a to the 3 times b to the 4. Okay, on the bottom, same thing. I'm going to multiply 9 and 2 to get 18, and I'm just going to keep my powers the same. Okay, remember you can't add your exponents because the bases aren't the same. It kind of draws on your exponent law knowledge a little bit. The next thing we can do is, is look at our new expression and say, well, I've got 24 divided by 18, so I could reduce this fraction to lowest terms. I've also got a to the power of three divided by a squared. So these bases are the same. So I could apply my exponent law for division of powers, which says I subtract my exponents. And I can do the same thing for my b to the power of four and b to the power of three. So simplifying this line would end up with a to the power of one, three minus two, and four minus three would be one. So I've got a, b. If I just reduce this fraction to lowest terms, I'd end up with four over three. It's just essentially multiplied straight across, just like fractions, and simplified. Remember, it's a good idea to state restrictions. In our first line, you can see if, if a or b was zero, we would have an invalid expression. So we just make a note of that a and b both cannot be equal to zero. If they were, we'd be dividing by zero. That's not possible. So when multiplying some rational expressions, sometimes it's best to factor numerator or denominator first. In a situation like this, where you've got a trinomial, top and bottom, it's, it's best to just kind of unpack your expression and factor and just see if anything interesting happens. And that's what we're gonna do in our first step. Okay, so we're gonna find two numbers that add to get one. Remember there's a one in front of this x while also multiplying to get negative six. You would see that three and negative two work. Okay, so I've just factored my numerator. I've kept my second expression the same. On the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find two numbers that add to get two while multiplying to get negative 15, so negative three and five would work. So I've now factored expressions. So instead of just simply multiplying straight across, I'm gonna start reducing my expression first. So you can see on top, I've got an x minus three binomial. I've got an x minus three binomial on the bottom. So we could cancel these out. Okay, x minus three divided by x minus three is one. And we can do the same thing with our x minus two and our x minus two. Okay, everything's being multiplied on top and bottom, so it's safe to cancel those terms. Okay, so that's what I've done here. Next thing I wanna do is just sort of simplify. Instead of having these black and green lines, I'm just gonna say that this is x plus three over x plus five. Before we get too carried away, it's a good idea to state our restrictions. Just go back up to your first line and you'll see that if I had x equal to three, negative five, or two, that would provide me with an invalid expression we cannot divide by zero. We just state our restrictions off to the side. Okay, so dividing rational expressions, very similar to multiplying, because remember when, we, when you're dividing fractions, you just flip your fraction and multiply. We could reduce our, our fractions before multiplying and simplify our lives a little bit. I've got a four on top, a two on the bottom. If I divide four by two, I end up with two. So that's where this two here comes from. You'll notice that this two is gone in my next line. This four is gone and has been replaced with a two. Same thing, I've got 15 on top and I've got five on the bottom. 15 divided by five is three, so I would have three 
left on top. That's where that three there comes from. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my powers. We've got a squared on top, we're dividing by a. If I subtract my exponents, this a cancels out with one of these a's, and I'm left with just one a on top. I've gotten rid of anything that I can cancel prior to multiplying. So the next thing that I have to do is just multiply these two expressions like as if they were fractions. So I'm gonna multiply three times two here. Right? Those are numbers that I can multiply together. Uh, there's an a with this term, but there's no a with that term. I've got a c and a c squared. Using my exponent laws, I know that c times c squared is c to the power of three. Remember, we add our exponents. So on top, I should have six times a times c cubed. On the bottom, I'm gonna add my exponents because I'm multiplying. So I've got b to the power of four. So that should be my simplified expression. Stating restrictions, uh, just going back to our first step here, you can see that before I even flip and multiply, if, I, if C was zero, I would be dividing by zero here. That's not possible. Same thing with my B, I cannot divide by zero. I've, I've turned my division into multiplication. I now have an A in, in the denominator, so I better state that A cannot be equal to zero. It's just stating my restrictions. We connected uh, multiplication and division of fractions to working with rational expressions. So I know this is kind of a scary concept, but you know, just think about this as multipl multiplication and division of fractions. That's something that you've been doing all throughout your, your studies of math. If you can relate it successfully back to that concept, it's really not that intimidating of a concept.